And I would like to welcome our next speaker, um, Orville Baldos is here. He's a graduate student at the University of Hawaii. Um, please welcome him. Um, so today I'll be discussing the effects of storage temperature and relative humidity on after ripening and viability of heteropogon tortoise seeds. Just to give you a brief introduction of why is it important to study seed dormancy, it's important to study it in a revegetation sense because uh, it can be a challenge when you're doing revegetation, uh, especially when you're uh, planting and establishing things. Uh, it can delay canopy fill-in, making, uh, making the plantings more prone to erosion and weed invasion. So in Hawaii, there's been recent interest in the use of native species in restoration, urban landscaping, as well as in roadside revegetation. While a number of plants have been evaluated as potential species for revegetation, there hasn't been enough studies on the seed production aspect, as well as the, seed, uh, the germination biology. Uh, Heteropogon contortus, or peely grass, is a drought-tolerant native perennial bunch grass, uh, which is found in Hawaii. Um, actually, it's also a pantropic species. It's found in Arizona, in Texas. It's also found in Australia, India, and Africa. Um, in Hawaii, it's found on all main islands, uh, growing from the coast up to 700 meters above sea level. Um, it's considered as an important species for revegetation because it is adaptable to low rainfall and low nutrient soils, and it has cultural and ecological value. In fact, the native Hawaiians have historically used peaty grass as their thatching material for their um, structures. One of the main problems with revegetation with peaty grass is that the seeds possess dormancy. Freshly harvested seeds don't germinate and require a dry after ripening period of about six to, six to 12 months. Um, while a, a lot of studies have recommended dry after ripening, nobody really looked at specific storage conditions and how it influences after ripening. So I looked at um, literature and seems seems that uh, temperature and relative humidity or seed moisture content affects the rate of after ripening or dormancy loss as well as uh, the maintenance of seed viability. So for this study, I look at storage temperature and relative humidity and see which optimum storage conditions are, uh, uh, are best for dormancy loss as well as for seed viability maintenance. So what I did for my study, uh, I collected seeds of the Koholabe Island uh, source identified germplasm from the USDA NRCS plant, plant material center in Molokai. So what we did was we combined harvested the seeds um, in March and October 2011. Um, then we removed the ons and cleaned the seeds even further and placed it in, in unsealed packets like this one. So once we got a critical mass of seed packets, we stored them in uh, desiccators filled with uh, different saturated salt solutions for about 28 days. So the saturated salt solutions I used was the um, lithium chloride for 12% relative humidity, uh, calcium nitrate for 50% relative humidity, and your table salt for 75% relative humidity. So these relative humidity treatments basically resulted in 6% moisture for the low, 11% moisture for the medium, and 14% moisture in the high um, treatment. So this is dry weight basis. So once I equilibrated the seeds, I sealed them to maintain the moisture content and placed them in three um, temperature regimes. So I have a warm temperature treatment about uh, 30 degrees Celsius, 30 degrees Celsius, which is about um, 86 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, ambient at uh, on average uh, 20 degrees Celsius, and the cool temperature at about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So we were uh, we incubated the seeds um, in in these conditions from zero to 12 months, and. After each incubation period, we conducted a germination test uh, to determine dormancy loss over time. And concurrently, we did tetrazoleum tests to determine seed viability 
or um, seed deterioration over time. And we also concurrently did a seed moisture test of um, the, the, the seed packets to see whether the seed moisture contents were maintained over time. Statistical analysis of the data included uh, for the seed germination and tetrazoleum counts, I modeled the data using a generalized linear mix model, which is a uh, prop mix in SAS, and separated the means using Tukey Kramer mean separation. For percent moisture, I did a square root transformation of the data before running an analysis of variance and separating um, the means using two KHSD mean comparisons. So let's go to the results. For percent moisture, basically the take-home message here is that um, the relative humidity treatments basically maintain uh, a specific seed moisture content throughout the experiment. So at 12%, I guess I'll reiterate, I'll reiterate it from based on the, the method. So at 12%, we have 6% seed moisture, 50%, 11% seed moisture, and at 75, we have 14% um, seed moisture content. Now let's look at percent germination to determine dormancy loss over time. So I have this table over here. Uh, to make it easier for us to see which treatment combinations were the best in terms of losing dormancy, I did a germination scale like this. So the basic thing here is as you increase your germination, the more greener your cells are. So let's look at the March 2011 seeds. So you'll notice here, actually, uh, let me just give you a background of to make it easier for us to read the table. So. We have temperature here, so it's increasing as you go down. And at each temperature treatment, you have a relative humidity value that's increasing as you go down. Um, you also have months of incubation for each column, so this is percent germination at each month of incubation. So what you'll notice first is that storage at 10 degrees Celsius, regardless of relative humidity, had less than 3% germination. So treat, uh, seeds that were stored here uh, remained dormant. The after ripening was actually observed at the 20 degrees Celsius treatments and at 30 degrees Celsius treatments. So you have um, at 20 degrees Celsius, you have uh, the optimal relative humidity wherein you got the most germination was at 50% while at uh, 30 degrees Celsius, it's either seed stored at 50 or seed stored at 12% relative humidity. So let's look at the stats for 12 months of germination. So the stats basically indicated uh, no significant differences between um, the 50% RH at 20 degrees Celsius uh, the 12% ERH at 30 degrees Celsius and 50% ERH at 30 degrees Celsius. Um, so based on this data, actually the, be the best in terms of uh, numerical um, germination was either the 12 at 30 or 50 at 30. So this trend was actually observed also in the October 2011 data set. Um, so in summary for the percent germination, so the take home message is uh, low temperature maintained or slowed down dormancy loss. And the best storage conditions are either 12 at 30 and 50 at 30. So taking the best treatment combination, which is 12 and 30, I looked at, uh, let's look at the dormancy loss over time of the two C batches. So as you'll notice here, the March 2011 seeds um, over time lost dormancy much earlier than the October 2011 seeds. So there's a, differences, uh, there's a difference in the depth of dormancy uh, each of, the, of each of the seed batches. So um, I was curious about why, what, what affected this depth of dormancy. So I looked at the climate data. So climate data generally indicated differences in growing conditions experienced by the seeds during its development. So for the March 2011 seeds, you had increasing day length, while the October 2011 seeds, you had an opposite effect, decreasing day length. 
Average temperature, on the other hand, was lower in the March 2011 seeds and higher in the October 2011 seeds. Um, solar radiation was also increasing during a growing period of March and uh, decreasing in the October 2011 seeds. Um, in terms of maturity also, the March 2011 seeds were more mature than the October 2011 seeds. Uh, total precipitation, this is precipitation, additional precipitation because we also had supplemental ir irrigation during the seed development. Um, so total precipitation was higher in the March 2011 seeds uh, and then you have low precipitation in the October 2011 seeds. So there's differences but the, all, although these um, differences kind of suggest um, that these uh, factors affect uh, the dental dormancy, we need to conduct further studies on this to uh, confirm and tease out these effects. So let's look at the tetrazolium viability test. So it's basically the same results for the March and October 2011 seeds. The TC test generally indicated that um, seed viability was maintained at all, at most treatments, except for the high relative humidity, which I guess you would expect as um, it's um, it's uh, seventy five percent. So, at twenty degrees Celsius, at high relative humidity, you start to see significant deterioration at about twelve months in storage. While at the high relative humidity and high temperature treatment, um, drastic decline in seed. Uh, viability was observed uh, as early as three months in incubation. Storage at low temperature and high relative humidity during our uh, storage period didn't seem to uh, impact uh, seed viability or there's no seed deterioration observed over time. So in conclusion, um, for my species, uh, storage temperature and relative humidity um, has an effect on after ripening and seed viability. So if you want to have uh, dormancy loss, optimum dormancy loss, you may want to store your seeds at 12% uh, relative humidity or 6% moisture at 30 degrees C and, or 50% relative humidity, which is 11% seed moisture at 30 degrees C for at least nine months. Um, there is also an observed depth of dormancy between the seed batches, and these may be due to growing conditions. Um, in order to make, if you want to maintain your dormancy, you should store it at uh, 10 degrees or less. And uh, if you want to avoid seed deterioration, you should you shouldn't store your seeds at 75 percent relative humidity or 14 percent seed moisture at either ambient or high temperatures. So I'd like to thank my uh, funding agencies for uh, this study. And uh, if you have any questions, yeah, please feel free to ask me. Thank you. Yes. Um, so, um, just to I guess just to reiterate the questions, um, did I basically the question is did I do the same thing for both the March and October twenty eleven seeds? Yes. Do you have a little bit of a lag to accumulate enough packets? No. Um, we 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 got the the, the I guess we we got the uh, sufficient amount of seeds for the study. for uh, the growing conditions of the plants? Or Between the, the, the March and October seed lots, how did the climate data that you showed affect the, the seed? Um, I think there's general differences between the two. So I think the October was more dormant, so you had less precipitation, you have decreasing day length, and you have um, 
what else? Oh, the temperature was uh, higher. Oh, okay. So. It's pretty much, as long as there's rain, it will flower and set seed. But normally, we uh, in Hawaii, we have a wet season and a dry season. Our wet season starts at about October to March, and dry season starts at about by April to um, September. So I guess it, it's, it also kind of explains how, why, um, why it after ripens, because uh, during the growing season, like December to March, when it sets seeds, uh, by March it will shed its seeds, and uh, after March it will dry up, and the temperature will increase or get warmer, and the humidity kind of drops, so it after ripens, and when the next season comes, when the re next ra rainy season comes, the seeds can start sprouting it, already like undergone an after ripening period. <coughs> Any more questions? What was the period of time that you watched the term? Um, 20 days. Okay. How did you sign up for 20 days? Um, based on the literature, it's like that's the average. So I kind of st stuck with um, what was in the literature for other species. Um, for different species, but actually when uh, I, because I observe it daily, um, usually if you have um, nor no dormancy at all, by 10 days all of the seeds have germinated. I'd be curious just to see because so many of our native species have sporadic germination over up to a year, what would happen, or what would happen if you leave them if some of the bees were still in them? Yeah, that's a, that's a whole really interesting thing about the white species, but it'd be good to understand more of that. Is there any other questions? Okay, thank you. Okay.